This conference will now be recorded. Okay, this is the link for my fine. You can install it, uh, like you can start installation together. I'll be proceeding further with the training. All right, so, okay, yeah. yeah. So that day we were talking about the source code repository, and uh, as I told, uh, there are two kind two source repositories which are supported by our Azure DevOps server. One is TFBC, which is Team Foundation version control, and another one is uh, uh, Git, Azure Git, so which is basically for. Azure Git, so there are two. So we started with uh, TFBC first. Uh, that you need to know because this tool is Azure DevOps, so we should know what is TFBC. Otherwise, uh, as a DevOps engineer, mostly like teams are using Git, so we'll be starting Git once we complete uh, the TFBC. So TFBC, Team Foundation was in control. And why they do call this T Team Foundation? Because Azure DevOps earlier known as Team Foundation Server. So the source control name was also the same. And they're keeping like, Keeping the same, so they didn't change the they didn't change the name of their source control. Source control, version control, so both are same thing, which are basically to manage the files, files, or versioning of the code, keeping the history, and all things. So uh, how do we do that? I just repeat it again. So if you are set, so Anil, did you get that installed? Which the studio? Yeah, I did. Uh, I got it in. Okay. Okay, great. So, and you have the organization already set, right? So, you are able to connect to that? Uh, actually, I just got it installed today, so I did not get it. Sorry? I did not get it connected yet. Okay, so you follow what I'm doing, okay? So, it, it will be helpful for you. Okay. Okay, so if we want to, so you open Visual Studio and uh, from visual studio we will be connecting to our organization so i was telling there are two different ways to connect to azure devops one you can connect through browser and another one you can connect through visual studio so from browser we connect like this we just browse to our url uh, where's that gone yeah if we just browse to our url we can connect to our organization but uh, if we are doing some coding and all, we need to connect through, uh, not through browser, we need to connect through any of the uh, software development software. So we are using Visual Studio here. So you need to connect through Visual Studio. And how do we connect? Uh, go to the team, click on manage connections. And because I'm already connected, so it's listing down, but for you, uh, it will be empty. What you have to do, click on manage connections, connect to team project, and then here click on the servers, and then add. So in add, you need to give the whole URL of your organization, like this. Uh, what is the name of your organization you need to give? Are you getting or?
Uh, just give me a second. I'm... Yes, uh, take your time. So for the people who just joined, uh, you know, I'm explaining about the team foundation version control. So there are two different repositories. One is team foundation version control and another one is the Git. So we are talking about team foundation version control for now. And half of the features we discussed in the previous call, remaining features of TFBC will be discussing today. And then we will start, we will be starting Git as well today. So now what step I'm showing is basically how to connect Azure DevOps from our uh, Visual Studio. So uh, these are the steps. If you have Visual Studio installed, you can follow. Otherwise, just watch what I'm doing. And if you want to install Visual Studio, I have shared the link. You can install from there. So team, manage connections, manage connections, and then server, add, and give the URL of your repository or your organization. Anil, let me know if you are stuck somewhere. It will be a little bit different because you might be using some different version of Visual Studio. So UI might be a little bit different. I just logged in. I think I can start. Can you help me with that? So you're done, right? No. I just logged in. Uh, it's taking very long time. Okay, okay, no worries then. Fine. Yeah. All right, so now we are connected to our uh, project in uh, uh, Visual Studio. And when we connect for a particular project, it will be listing out like what all repositories we have. So this icon is for Team Foundation version control, and this is for Git. We can have n number of Git repository in one project, but uh, uh, TFVC, we will be having only one repository. So for now, we have one one. Uh, to connect to TFVC, just double click on this. It will open like this. And to manage the source control, we just need to click on Source Control Explorer. And Source Control Explorer will be open on left hand side, where it will be listing down like how many folders, branches, and the code is there in my project. Everything will be listed down. Now, uh, if you right click on any of the project, any of the folder, you will see these are the different options which helps us to work with TFBC and manage our version control. So that day we had uh, spoke about get latest version, which is basically for downloading the latest code from server. Check out for edit if you want to edit any file. So before that, you need to check out and once you check out this file will be logged by your name and other developer or other member of your team will see like this guy is working on that and he's editing delete if you want to delete the file rename is for renaming the file move if you want to move it from one folder to another rollback is basically if you want to roll back to any previous version so that all we have seen in last course with the practical so i think you're fine if you have some questions with any of those i'll repeat it again Undo pending changes. Basically, uh, if we are making some changes and we want not to push it to the final server repository, so we can undo. Check in if you are you have edited any file and you are fine with uh, putting it into the our source control. So check in pending changes we have to do. Shell is not required for now. Leave it. View history if we want to see how many. Uh, different changes have been done in your file or folder or code. You just see the view history and it will display all the history has been done in particular uh, file or code. Compare if you want to compare to different folders, to different files, or two different versions of any file, you can use this one. New folder if you want to add a new folder here, you can just simply click new folder, new folder will be created. Add items to folder. So, add items to folder also, I've shown you like. When we work with TFVC, we have to map this to our local repo. So whatever we have to do, first we have to make a local folder and then any action we can do. So this script folder we have mapped to our this local drive, which is C drive, this folder and all. And my all this code is in my local drive as well. So you see this. C parts unlimited. So same scripts are there in my local system also. And these all folders are in my local also. 
so uh, if i add any new folder in my local system and i want to push it to my source code i can just click on this and add uh, or pick up folders from local which will be pushed to the server okay till this point we have discussed i think you are fine with this if any questions let me know otherwise we'll be starting from branches today Anurag, uh, I just start uh, open. Uh, so I'm not able to link uh, the organization or the project I created with uh, the visual. Can you share the screen? I don't have access. Yet. Okay, I'll make you present about. Okay, click on this Teams button. Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, which one you have installed basically? The community. Sorry? Which Visual Studio? Okay, can you give me the control one second? Yeah. Press control. Okay, this is community version fine. So uh, in uh, in Visual Studio 2015, they call it Teams, but now they renamed it as Git because uh, Team was basically for uh, TFBC and all. But now mostly things are uh, basically uh, this what to call Git. So we are they're using Git as a term. So how do we do? Just Git Git clone repo because we have to clone it from server. Uh, Azure DevOps. Add Azure DevOps server. I think it's coming, right? Yeah. Okay. Turn it. This will be different. okay. Now the team is there, so manage connections. We will do forget about this for now. What I was explaining was with this team manage connections, and we are connected to our project. Fine now, you are seeing because you have only one rep over here. You don't see the TFVC, which because it's not created. So we'll create one TFVC, and you'll be able to see this. Can you open um, in the browser the same organization? I think I already mm -hmm. okay, let me open. Where is that? In this browser? Uh, in this browser only two. I don't see it in this one. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, how do we create repo? You remember? Yeah. Okay. Can you do? Oh, 
no, no, no. So if we want to create new repository, we need to go to the repo. And there in this drop down, we see the option called new repo. Okay. It will list out all the repository plus give option to create new. So we'll be creating a new repository. And we want to create one git or TFPC. So TFPC will create and we'll create one TFPC. Okay, it's created now, but there's no files and also it's fine. We so gave and refresh it. It might take few minutes to reflect. Okay, it is now there. So we'll be double click on this. It will open. It's connecting with. Yeah, it's connected. Now, if we want to manage our source control, we need to go to the source control. And it's open over here. Now, if you want to do anything into this, want to add any file, download any file, modify any file, you need to map it to local drive first. So how do we do? Just click on this one, not map. So it will open prompt for mapping it and give any lo local folder. Maybe you also give the C drive uh, the same name. It will download whatever was there, but we don't have anything. So, okay, it is mapped now. Okay, it's mapped. Now you can do all these things what I was doing. Open the get letters, check out, delete, undo, blah blah blah. blah. Okay, so uh, now you, mm -hmm. I have few doubts in rollback. Yeah, so there are multiple users, and you know, multiple people are editing a file, and you would mm -hmm. want to go to exactly like you know, there are three, uh, three users one and two, uh, which had edited the file yesterday and you want to go back to one which was edited at certain time in which was done by you user one mm -hmm. uh, would, yeah uh, will we be able to do that or uh... yes 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 we can roll back to any of the version so for each change there will be a version so mm -hmm. whenever any check-in happens or uh, any changes happen there will be one history uh, generated so mm -hmm. you can go back to any of this tier you can roll back uh, whatever is done in that particular change set. what a particular change so i'll show you in my screen okay oh. i'm sharing back okay so now i'll show you there are two things. First is you see the view history and it will show you like there are two changes in this. I'll take some file where a more change. Three. Look at this, I'll show you view history. So this is done by me when uh, this time and another one done by me, you can consider it as some other user also, it will be same like this. Okay. And you see, you, you find like, okay, this guy has done, okay, I'll do one more change. Uh, let us, I'll add some of this dummy changes. Control S, close, right click. Check in pending changes. If you want to give something comment for check in, you can give dummy changes. Click on check in. This is check in. Now you will see, you still see three changes here. So this one I created first, then I deleted some file, and then I done done some change now you realize after this this guy has done some wrong thing 
we don't want this change but you want this version plus this version combination kind of thing but you don't want this so we can roll back this entire chain set that means whatever the change has been done in this will be reverted back this is one scenario another thing if you want like these two things will go back i don't want these two things and i want this to be done or this original version has to be there then uh, you can just select uh, all the versions all together and do the rollback so it will revert all these things how it is done it will uh, create a rollback change from a chain set so whenever we do any changes there is an id created for this every change or every ht so you see this this id was 9 this id was 17 and first one was 7 so uh, it is identifying like i want to revert back everything from 9 to 7 so rollback change from a range of screenshot like from 9 to 17 what was done will be going back and i will be on this stage so like this we can roll back and once you roll back you have to check in roll back and done and there will be new history generated with the new number like this One, and, uh, after rollback right can we go back to if it was incorrectly done can we go back to dummy change yeah, yeah, yeah. you can you can go anywhere wherever you want to go so you roll back this then you will because this one has done some rollback so you roll back this again so this change said whatever it done in this will be gone back. so if you open this file for now with uh, I'll undo the changes. Undo. And after undo, okay, you see this file. There is nothing in this file because you have rolled back. Now, if I roll back, the latest change set you will see my original file where i have written dummy changes will come back so view history i don't want this this has done some wrong thing for me roll back this just to check in and our this file came back so like this it happens got it thanks yeah okay fine now we'll go further so till here we are done now branching and merging so this is like very good concept whatever the store tool you are using whether gate or cfs vc or any other source control this concept will be there and it is unique like it's like uh, not unique it's like common uh, like you branching will remain branching everywhere and, uh, and if and you go in any of the interview they will ask you what is the branching you are using what the branching strategy you follow and what is that what are the benefits so if you're going for NCI CD building in your interview this question will be there so branching is basically uh, what happened like when you are working on any software development project uh, if you are keeping your files like this like if you see everything inside this parts and limited agent capability code review script and this code is my production code where i have done something and i deployed in production environment and that is running fine and tomorrow again when new feature coming in I'm, i started working on this again same thing same folders i working started working again and i have made some thousand commits like thousand check-ins my developers had done after five days uh, the team came with some requirement the whatever we have uh, deployed on production had some issues we want to make some changes in the production code now we are in trouble because in 10 days we have modified too many things in production code and how do we understand what was there 10 days back in that scenario what we do we create the copy of same thing 
we create the copy and same thing by using the branching mechanism so what i will do i will create a branch of all these folders whatever in my code keep it is as a branch and whenever i'm doing something new i will create a new branch i will get the same code and then i'll do the start doing my changes that way i have the copies of everything and i know which code it belongs to what so creating branch maybe differs tool by tool but concept will remain same why we need branches so i'll uh, in tfbc we are cre will create a branch by create a click on branch in git i'll show you how do we create branch but why we create that remains same so i'll create a branch for this whole code so it is asking from where you want to create i want to create whatever inside this it will create and where i want to create inside parts unlimited and the name of branch should be i'll give the branch name i'll keep the same name parts unlimited Click OK. Target part cannot be under the source. Sorry, yeah. So what, for creating branch, I was doing some wrong. So what we have to do, let's say this is our production code. So we have to create branch of this. So I'll do go to this one. I'll convert this folder as a branch. Okay. now this folder will become the branch so you see this folder has this icon but now this become a branch and this has some code x code let's say this is my production code or some code which is like in use now i want to do some more development some new feature is coming in and i don't want to touch this one i don't want to disturb what is there because this is some running code and i have something so what i'll do i'll create one more branch from here so right click branching merging click on branch it will give us okay from this branch what you want to create so i'll give something code review policy development branch so one more branch one more copy of this whole thing will be created yes and same thing is now here also code review policy and is all files this way we have like multiple copy of the same thing and now if i want to make some changes uh i will i'll give permissions to my developers okay you have to work in this you don't need to work on this one because it belongs to production core or some other code we don't want to disturb this start doing everything in this so we have the copy and people will do start doing the things that's why we need branching because when uh, it's a single team or five users or eight two developers then it's fine we can manage but when it's a big team there are 15 20 50 developers are working and they are doing regular check-in check-out managing without branch is like nightmare uh we cannot roll back we cannot understand what was deployed where and what code i have and all with the branching and uh, we can manage all these things and with the naming convention also we know like what belongs to me if i rename this rename i can say like this is production after renaming i check in okay. same way if we want to create more we can create more branches like this so now i'll work on this one first i need to download this in my local or i have to map it so it's already mapped but it's not downloaded so i'll do right click get latest version and now this branch is also in my local system if you click on this you will see this code review policy production code review policy development two different branches and you can work on the other one like this we will be working on this one we'll be making changes so if we make change in this uh, this one will not be disturbed so i'll do some change in this file for now just to show you this file 
I am giving some command command for explaining the branches. Control S, I have saved it. Right click, check in. Check in. This will be checked in. So now this file is different here, different here and in production it is different. Okay, so now it is different. Okay, my develop. Okay, now what happens in this scenario? Like it's not like we will be running different, different, different. Anyhow, in the end, we need to combine the code some somewhere. So sometime what happens? We will create like users or teams depend on their branch policy. They create multiple branches simultaneously. Like they call it feature branches. Like one team is working on feature one, another one is working feature two. But in the end, it's a complete software package. So they need to merge the code between them. So if I have worked on some different file, others are working on different file, but the so the final solution is like uh, uh, conclusion of everything. So we need to merge it back somewhere. So uh, now if you see this this file, I had done something, but it is not here. And once I'm done with my development, what I'll do, I'll merge this branch into this. So whatever the things uh, modifications have been made in this will also goes to this one. So how do we do that? So right click on this. Branching is done. Now we need to merge it. From where? I want to merge from development to production. So I'll show you before merging, I'll show you. So this file doesn't have any change, right? What I have given like uh, for a branching explanation. While here it is. Come in for after merging, this will go to this. So code review, branching, merging, merging. All changes next. Next. Finish. So we are merging from here to there. So changes will be made in target branch, not the source branch. So after merge, I need to check in again. Merge. Check. Done. Now, if you open this file, you will see the same thing. Come in. So that changes what I have made here. It is done here. And if you see the history, it is merged from where? From this part. So it will show you all the details like this. We manage branching and merging. Okay. You can read about uh, more about it uh, on internet on Microsoft blogs. What is branch? But concept is same and you can get like uh, now you will if you want to read you will you will be able to relate it. Like, uh, what is that and why are we doing? And uh, so if you go there, we were here branching and merging. Branching is done. Merging is done. If you see the view hierarchy, like uh, in in your case, like you will get ten or fifteen branches listed out here, and you want to see which one belongs to which branch. So how do we see this? So if you click on view hierarchy, Okay, some issues are there. So it will show like if this branch was created from where. So that will list out like the complete list. Not sure why it is not giving, but yeah, this is for this. All right. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, if we get any merge conflicts while doing that, mm -hmm. 
yeah so do we need to send it back to developers or how it is so you you know about conflict that's good so i'll show you what conflict basically what is conflict so uh let's say we are now both of the both the branches have same code right and sometime what happens in both the branches development is going on in our case we have production branch we are not touching it but uh, let me create one more branch development to development to continue to branch yes okay now leave the production branch and the two teams are working on development and development too let me download this in my local okay okay uh i'm making some changes again in this file comment for explaining the conflict control s check in progress check in check okay now if i merge this to this it will be done without any problem but if i merge uh, if i make some changes in this also command for explaining merge issues and blah 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 yes check in done now if i merge from here to there what will happen it will see this file is something else and this file is something else and so which one i should keep and also i'll show you in real now if you go for merging from development to development 2 we'll change it to development 2 not to the production development 2 click next Finish. let's see what happened so the conflict came it is saying uh, in your target file there is something already there so what do you want to do so either you want to keep the file which is in uh, target branch which is development 2 or you want to keep the file which is in source branch which is like uh, development or you want to keep both like it's not like you will remove whatever is done in target or in source so manage changes in merge tool so merge tool will open the changes one by one like so if you open this it will be showing like okay in this source branch this is there while in target branch something else is there so how do you keep this um, Okay, except much. Except much. Now, like developer has to understand what they want to keep, and uh, mostly like uh, in case of any uh, conflict, because we are not sure what needs to keep. Our job is like basically to merge, or mostly like developers only do merging, but because uh, they know their code, we don't know their code. But if they need to understand the things and all, we can tell them like uh, this is the thing which is happening because in your source file this, this is the code and in your target file this is the code. And now it's up to you what you want to keep, and they they will do the merging. So after resolving merge, we can do now. We have to again merge because we have removed the conflicts. Um, this much. 
second. And now if you open this file, yeah, so because we have removed it during our uh, resolve conflict, so that change didn't come over here. So like this. so in case of conflict, we have to contact the developer or uh, mostly like uh, uh, we do not get involved because it's like in one project, this merging will happen like day in day out. So involving other team members, other teams and all will be like unnecessary thing. So we just need to provide them permissions for managing and they when they can manage their own what they need to do. But we have to know like what is this? So that's how this conflict occurs. Okay. Yeah, fine. All right. So branch merge view hierarchy convert to folder is like if you want to, because we made this from folder to branch. If you want to revert back it as a folder, you can do simply. So this option is in this tool, but not in Git and all. Reparent. Uh, so if you see about parent, the development two was created from development. So development is parent for this, but if you want to reparent it, you can change the parent to main or something, but this is of no use. So it's okay. And that's all in this now find find is basically if you want to search some uh, like if you have thousand files and you are looking for like where is my file and also you can search by either by chain set basically whenever any check in happens you get a chicken number or right status like it's checked out or something or wildcard like you can give uh, if you want to search for all the sln files or cs files so star.sln in this folder it will search for all the sln files in this folder and will give us so only one file was found with this on this so you can open so this find is basically for searching with different different uh, parameters now advanced is uh, is like some other advanced option which are not included here so what are those get specific version so when we right click get latest version it will always download whatever is the available on the server but sometimes the requirement is something else developer don't don't want to download the latest always for some debugging or troubleshooting he might need to download some other version so what they do get specific version and uh, here in this latest version they can choose like i want to download the code from this date or from this chain set id like whenever this check-in has happened the id i want to download the code from that particular version so this thing can be done from uh, this advanced option uh, label they can apply so uh, like what happens when uh, any team is working with uh, or source control things and whenever they're making any changes the history gets created so in history there are two things i will open one file in history there are two things one which automatically generates whenever there are any checking happens like these numbers and chains are will generate there's one more history which is label if you want to apply some manual history over there so uh, if you are saying okay today uh, some code has been deployed to production and you want to remember that thing so with chain set you cannot do because you are not making any check-in but if you want to apply some uh, manual history what you have to do apply apply label and you can say like uh, production deployment is done so you know like at this state this time production deployment is done and if after 10 days or one year you want to come back and see when it was done you can identify with this label so how it is scripts again go to view history so along with change set you will see one label and you see the label which we applied and you can again if you want to download you can download code from this label so label is one manual history properties nothing okay so clock is also nothing exploring so now one more in, important concept is about security so when you click on security this one window will open 
basically uh, what happens when we have a big project we do not allow everyone to do everything in that if like like the way i was working right i was editing checking in the code and doing anything blah 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 if we give everyone the same permission it might destroy the whole project some new guy or someone who doesn't have like understanding he can come and he just to check in check out and it will break the system so that way we cannot manage like uh, what is this happening for that we there's a security concept is there in this project at any of the folder level or any of the permission we can set up the permissions okay in this branch only these permissions or these people can do check in or check out or only if you want to give some read permission so these guys can only do the reading they can see they cannot do anything they can just see so there are different different permissions for that which can be set from this here Okay, so open. So it's opening it from the browser. It's again taking us to the browser automatically. security for this particular branch we can assign so you remember we talked about different security groups and all when we start reading about the project so we can set up so project collection admin like administrator can do anything he can do the check-in check-out label lock create branch merge and all he can do everything same way build administrators are there if there are some users in build admin what they can do they can check in check out and all if you want to change these permissions you can change okay i don't want build admin to do check in so you deny if you want uh, them to not to manage branches or want to manage branches you allow them so they can create delete branches and all so that way we can manage the permissions so readers can only read they cannot do anything else like this uh, if you have someone we can manage the permission or we can add persons explicitly also like uh, what permissions are there for but uh, permissions can be uh, for the users who are already part of the project it's not like someone else is coming from outside and having permission so if they're part of project but if it's part of project what level of permission they should have on my code so that way we can manage permission for the code got it all right so these are the things in this tfbc so tfbc is like not uh, not in mostly used but as we are learning azure devops which is microsoft tool so we have to understand microsoft version control so tfbc is microsoft provided version control so we have to learn it and yeah no so now we'll be proceeding for git but uh thing is only five ten minutes and if we start git today it will be break so well, better we'll start from scratch tomorrow from the git and i want everyone to install uh, at least please uh, visual studio otherwise it will be tough to continue okay if you have any questions in tfbc we can discuss for now but git then we will be starting tomorrow so if i start today it will be uh, we have to repeat it again is that okay hello
Then, okay, yeah, I'm good here. <laughs> so tomorrow, please come with the uh, visual studio installation. Okay. Yeah. Actually, uh, Anurag, uh, I was not sure about the part where uh, uh, if we have multiple uh, duplicate branches of the same one. And uh, your voice is breaking, Anirudh. Your voice is not clear. Yeah, so, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Yes, yeah. yes. So, my doubt is with regards to merge. Uh, when we created multiple branches, like uh, for example, one is development, one is production, and uh, yeah, only in case where the same code is there, but uh, in the same within the same code in the within the same line, uh, the both the branches have different code in it. Only then there is a conflict arising. Is that the case? So conflict arise like if you have one branch called branch one and branch two okay and you uh -huh. are you have done some development in branch one mm -hmm. and uh, branch two you you didn't do anything and you are merging the changes you have made in branch one to branch two then there will no no conflict whatever you have done in branch one will be applied to branch two also okay okay then it's a simple merging process but in case you have branch one and in branch one in one file which is like hello.txt we have you have written some code and in branch two in the same file hello.txt you have write some other code so when you are going to merge the system get confused like what is this hello that talks there is something else there is in, in this something else so what do we do in that case so in that case conflict comes when there, there are two different uh things for the same file occurs then the version com conflict comes in okay so for example right uh, when we have a source code or you know we call it a parent code or you know parent mm -hmm. branch right uh, so of that we have branches right so when you are done with your production or you know when you're done with a code what we do is we always so that you know you can deploy it is that right yes correct okay so now uh, the parent code and the development code will always be different yes mostly is, is the case but what happened like uh, when you are talking about branching strategy so we have mm -hmm. a main branch which is like a new branch where i keep my fresh code and uh, whenever any development is happening or any new feature is coming i'll create one branch called feature one branch okay okay and team will start working on the feature one branch and they will create the build and package from there and that package will be deployed on my uh, test environments uat environment performance environment so keep on development is happening in the feature branch and we are deploying code on different different environments and it's getting tested once everything is fine one day we find like okay our all the features expected are done we want to deploy the features to the production so from uh, feature branch i deploy my code onto the production Okay. okay now the code is in feature branches production code which is deployed on production and main branch code is old code so what i do in the end so most of the branching strategy works like that they keep main branch as the production code always so i'll merge my code from feature to the main branch and so main will also have the latest code which is production while the development and everything was happening in feature my main was untouched but when you finalize okay production is good i have I'm, I'm i want to move back to main so i merge back everything to main and then when feature 2 coming on i will create one more branch from main so like that it, it goes on okay but it depends it's like one branching strategy the team can have like thousand up to them they they don't want to create branches for every feature it's up to them they want to do everything from master it's up to them but the tools provide you the features and it's up to you how do you strategize so this is one of the branching strategy where you keep main as like always production and when and whenever any uh, new feature is coming in you create a feature branch and teams do the development over there yeah
okay fine then we'll see you tomorrow thanks anurag yeah thanks everyone yeah, yeah bye thank you anurag bye <clears throat>